Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to another wonderful ankle cast. That's right, it's the show you've been waiting for. An ankle cast back again. Uh, or maybe you haven't, which I guess is probably more likely. But, uh, yeah, welcome. And, uh, nice to talk to everybody again. It's almost three o'clock in the morning. And, uh, no, Rish and I haven't stayed up late again like we used to do. Instead, I am up that early in the morning. It's Father's Day today, too. It's my special Father's Day present from my, uh, uh, place of employment. I get to come at three in the morning to work on the weekend morning show because somebody has quit on me and that person will not be there. And so here I am. Yay! Uh, uh here. Huh. I wasn't supposed to yawn like that on here. I'm sorry about that, folks. Um, Hopefully, uh, doing a podcast will at least keep me awake for uh, the majority of the drive into work today. Um, We'll have to see how that goes. Maybe you will hear live on the podcast me falling asleep, driving off the road, and dying. Oh, wait. You'll probably never hear the podcast if that happens because I'll be dead and won't have posted it there for... um, But anyways, yeah, I am uh, on my way to work. It's a beautiful Father's Day morning. And um, I'm trying not to yawn because that is one of those, uh, what do they call it? It's the, uh, uh, it's catching. It's uh, when you yawn, other people yawn contagious. That's the word that wouldn't come to my mind at this early time of the day. But uh, but yeah, today is Father's Day, which is the 16th of June. Yesterday was the 15th of June, and uh, I always talk about my running goals here on uh, the ankle cast. Yesterday was my first race that was a part of my running goals. Um, My overall goal, of course, is to run a marathon. And um, as part of that goal, I've been working, you know, towards... I also had a half marathon kind of scheduled in that I was going to run. And I I did that yesterday. It was was actually a lot of fun. Um, We started up in a canyon and ran down and out, um, which is good because, you know, downhill is easier to run than anything else because kind of gravity just takes you and you just kind of got to let it. And if you let it take you, you'll get there and you'll get there fairly quick. Um, it was also a bit of an ordeal though, because, uh, I think somebody was saying that they think it's because of traffic concerns is why they do this, but, uh, the race started at 6 a.m. And uh, that's good because in June it has a tendency to be hot. And uh, I didn't have to worry about that because it started at 6 a.m. before it could ever get hot. Uh, but I was wondering at the time, how much do we gain and how much do we lose? Because, yeah, it started at 6 a.m., um, which made it so that it never got too hot, but we had to be up there to get on the bus to get bussed up to the top of the canyon for the start line at 4 a.m. So this is basically the same time I got up yesterday to run the freaking half marathon. Um got up at this time and was throwing on running clothes instead of work clothes um and yeah uh, 
how much <sighs> can you gain from getting up at 4 a.m. and missing all that sleep just to avoid the cold weather or the hot weather I should say sorry you don't avoid the cold weather by getting up really yeah I mean was it really worth it somebody was saying that what it really was is just traffic concerns because they closed down the canyon road um, so that we could you know all run down apparently it was it was a each year it gets bigger I guess this race they said there was 1,400 racers last year, and this time there was over 2,200. Um, so I suppose it's important to close down the road because, yeah, I mean we had a mass of people. Like when the when the race started, they shot off the hey, here's the gun, and they shot it, and then basically we just had to walk um, until we got across the the starting line. And then it started at least to clear up enough that we could run. But yeah, it, it took, I think, two minutes for me just to get across the starting line from uh, when they shot the gun. But uh, they had special chips in our little... that were attached to the back of our little bibs. So... We didn't have to worry. I guess that your actual recorded time didn't start until you actually went across the starting line. So um, you didn't have to worry unless you were one of those people that thought you were going to win the race. And then they, they suggest you be up at the front because they actually used the gun starting time for uh, the... For the, uh, you know, the, the timing of it. But otherwise, it was what your chip said your uh, race was. So, uh, yeah, it was... It was quite an ordeal, I'll have to admit. 13 miles is a long way. Um, and uh, my <laughs> legs are so sore right now. The next morning after having slept very small amount. I think I only slept like four hours. Um, but yeah, my legs are killing me. They're so sore. A couple of times when I've run, I actually have run 13 miles as a practice run once. Um, and when I've done that, I've done this thing where I just got, uh, I've heard that get, taking an ice bath after running is uh, really beneficial in that it will make your muscles not so sore the next day when you wake up. Um, I've never actually taken an ice bath, but I have taken like a cold bath where I just turned the water on to as, you know, as cold as it would go and filled up the bath with that water and then... Uh, sat there in that for a little while. It's hard, really hard to get into that bath. But once you get in, it's not so bad. I'm sure it would be much worse if there was ice floating in that water or something like that. Uh, I remember one time when I was in high school, I had hurt my ankle a little bit and they told me to put it into the whirlpool, uh, which was apparently this little uh, you know, just a big bucket, not a bucket, but, you know, a big tank full of water, and I was like, oh, okay, that, that seems fine, and I stuck my foot in there, and it was ice cold water, which I was had not been informed of, and I was just like, oh my god, ah! and I sat there for as long as I could bear, which was, I only had my foot in there for like a minute, I don't know, it was the smallest amount of time, and finally I'm like, okay, uh, I'm sure it's fine. And I took my foot out. I'm like, I I'll just deal with the pain. It's much better than dealing with this freezing cold water. But yeah, I actually did that before where I sat in the ice bath. And, uh, yeah, and I did that. And, 
uh, it was a cold bath, not a nice bath, but I did it after running. I've done it twice, I think, and, and I think it helps. Um, I'm pretty sure that I was less sore afterwards than I might have been otherwise. Um, but yeah, I'm pretty dang sore. My calves always get so, so sore afterwards, and they're also the things that I have to stretch the most often, and uh, the things that bother me the most, too. It's funny, when I got to the end of the race, I was like, okay, I'm to the end, and now I'm going to pick it up, and I'm going to put in full effort and run as fast as I can, and I picked it up, and I started running faster, you know, and I put my head up, and I'm like, yes, yeah, gonna go across the finish line. I started going faster, and my calf was just like, wonk! It just hurt. I was <laughs> just like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Let me see if I can run faster without uh, aggravating that, because how? Um, but yeah, it was a good time, uh, of sorts. It's one of those things where you really love to be able to have accomplished it. It's probably not one of those things that you, I don't know, would do for fun. But maybe I do do it for fun. I, I don't know. Maybe that's what I've done, what I've become. Um, I like running a lot. It's, uh, it's nice. You're just kind of out there. You can zone out. Your, your mind can just go wherever it wants to go and you don't have to worry about anything. You're just there and you're just plodding along and that's all that matters is that you keep your uh, your feet going and I even did that in a couple spots like there was a spot where we had to go up a pretty steep hill for just a short bit and most everybody just walked it they all stopped running and just walked up the hill and then started running when they got to the top I forced myself to keep running and I was thinking of the Dory uh, you know Dory from Finding Nemo's little catchphrase of just keep swimming, just keep swimming. Oh, 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 oh. Um, so yeah, I just I kept going, and I the sad part was I was still running and I was going up this hill. The people that were walking were going the same speed as me, but I kept running, and I made it to the top, and I ran the entire time. The only time I walked at all was. Uh, here and there where they have those little stations where they'll give you like water and Gatorade and stuff like that um, I would stop to walk while I drank those because they give them to you in a little cup and I'm just not very good at drinking and running at the same time I wind up choking on it and coughing for the next uh, five minutes to get the water that I've got lodged in my throat in a weird way out so i learned my lesson because there was one time I tried to keep running with it and uh, that didn't work out well so I would walk for that but uh, other than that I just kept swimming um but yeah it was pretty awesome I didn't get a good time I'll have to admit I am a slow runner I run like I think 12 minute mile is like good for me um, if I can make it 12 minutes the whole way. I think I probably did get an average of 12 minutes. Uh, or at least really close to that. In uh, yesterday's race. Um, but, uh, yeah. I think I came in, I think my final time was 2 hours and 36 minutes. Um, which, you know, I, I've been training with my brother in-law and my sister and they run much they've been doing running much longer than I have we'll say and so they're in much better shape in general and they can run faster and longer than I can and so they went for it you know once the gun once we finally got across the uh, start line they started going and I was trying to keep up with them at first, because, you know, I thought it might be uh, cool, but uh, it didn't last for very long, because they kept weaving in and out, they were trying to get going at their pace, and, uh, you know, it was so, the, the road was so crowded with people that they were, like, going off the road and running on the shoulder sometimes to get past people, and I would try and follow them, and, and there wasn't really a lot of shoulder, I mean, we were in a canyon right up above a river, and, uh, could have been really easy to trip going off onto the shoulder the way they were doing 
and after a while I was finally just like you know what I'm good where I'm at and I stayed where I was at and uh ran from there it was kind of a bit of a bummer because I think one of the biggest downhill sections uh was right after the start line where you really have to go and you couldn't you couldn't really go because there was just too many people around and you would hit somebody and fall and I did actually hit somebody once um (laughs) I was I the road had this it was not level we'll say it kept tilting from side to side and uh, it was hurting my legs with this tilt so I kept trying to move from side to side along with the road and uh, I think that actually made me run much more than just a 13.1 mile race because I kept going back and forth and back and forth on the road But yeah, I was just trying to get on the flat spots of the road. I mostly tried to stay towards the middle where the stripe was, but sometimes even that wasn't flat enough. I'd have to go over onto the other side or go over to the uh, right to the edge by the shoulder or something like that. Um, And uh, yeah, I had uh, on my phone, I had running the little app that you can get where it tracks your run using the GPS in the phone, and it'll tell you how far you've run. And when I first started out, you know, I was doing my run, and and, uh, I think I had to hit start on on the app, you know, probably 40 or 50 feet before I actually crossed the starting line. So usually I was running down the canyon and I I would see the mile markers and that would be 40 or 50 feet before the mile marker that my app would get on and say, you've made it one mile, good job, you douche. And, uh, but as the time went by, um, I, I was earlier and earlier that I would hear that I'd been two miles and three miles and then I would see the mile marker until at a certain point, I was way before the mile marker when it would tell me that I'd run that mile. And so uh, when I finished the race, my app said that I went 13.67 miles instead of 13.1. So I guess the course is 13.1 miles, but I was weaving all over it like a drunken sailor. And so I made it uh, a little extra. I did some an extra half mile because of that so uh, that means I'm that much more of a friggin brawny awesome studly man is what that means doesn't mean anything else so anyways uh, yeah it was a good time I got a little medal and they gave us French toast uh, afterwards for our meal which was kind of weird I couldn't eat it and it's supposed to be really good French toast, too. Um, one of those places that sells you French toast, and it's like $7 for French toast. And, uh, yeah, I got some of that French toast, and I went to eat it, and I had one bite of it, and I was like, whoa! It was like I just put, like, a, a cup of brown sugar in my mouth or something. I was like, oh, my gosh, this is so sweet. I can't eat this right now. You know, I don't know if you, uh, you know, certain people, like my sister is one of those where she just can't eat anything after having run. Uh, She has to wait like a while. She'll just make a smoothie and and have that after running usually. She just won't eat. But, uh, yeah, I mean, I can eat certain things, but a huge blast of sugar is not one of them, man. It was rough. And so I just said, here, kids, why don't you guys eat this? Um, Because, blah, I'm going to puke. But yeah, my my kids were uh, pretty funny with all that. They so wanted all the treats that they had. But the treats were only for the runners, you know. And uh, I admit I shared a little with them. I I was a bad person and gave it to them and... I'm sure there was some of those last runners coming in that didn't get stuff all because of me. But I would grab a a couple extra of this and that and the other thing and 
and like I was gonna eat them, but then I didn't. I gave them to my kids instead because I couldn't eat anything at that time. The only thing I could eat was chocolate milk. I drank four of those little containers of chocolate milk like that you used to get when you went to lunch in elementary school. You know, you get the little the little carton. And, uh, yeah, I drank four of them immediately after the race because I was thirsty and they were just perfect. There was something just right about chocolate milk at that time. Better even than water or anything else. But, uh, yeah, so that was my big experience uh, at my first half marathon. It was a lot of fun. Um, Hopefully I can keep at it. Um, it seemed like an awful lot to do, and it's only half of what I'm actually training for. Um, I'm supposed to run two miles past the half marathon finish line in a couple weeks when we do our next big long run as part of our training. So, see how that goes. Uh, but anyways... Yeah, um, I did that, and also I think since the last time that I had an ankle cast, I also moved. Um, I had to have, because I think even since the last time we recorded for the regular show, I moved, and I haven't recorded for the ankle cast forever. So, yeah, I moved out of my house, which was, you know, one of those arduous, it's always an arduous process to move. It just sucks. And when you've been there for a long time, I would say it's probably a lot worse because you've had much more time to spread out and to put your things everywhere. And so it takes so long to pack it all up. It takes so much more effort than uh, you ever want to put forth. Um, and worse yet for me is that we didn't move anywhere particular yet really I mean, we just moved to a temporary apartment for a couple of months and then we're gonna have to move back we're gonna have to move again uh, at the end of that to the house when it's finally done um, but the house is coming along and it'll be done fairly quickly it really looks like it's uh, zipping along uh, we were just in it yesterday, and there was, like, you know, a banister on the stairs already, and they've got all the drywall and the texturing done, and it's just pretty amazing, and it looks really nice, and we're all really excited about being able to move into this place. Um, but, yeah, it was really hard to move out of our house, I and mean, we've lived there for so long, and it became really... Uh, really sentimental to me, you know? I was a little bit sentimental to begin with, and uh, then I heard this story from my wife about how on the last day that she was there, she was cleaning up and getting everything ready, and then it, it was time to go, and my oldest son was nowhere to be found, he disappeared and he'd be gone for like 20 minutes and she was just like oh shoot where'd he go and she's yelling for him uh at the top of the stairs like she's always done <laughs> and uh, he wasn't coming and it was really funny too because she yells at him from the top of the stairs and then the baby goes and stands at the top of the stairs and yells like he's calling for it and he's not even saying anything that you could tell he's just like blah 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 um, but it's pretty cute to see him uh, do that. But he did that too, like he always does. And uh, then she went downstairs and she found my son and he was crying. And she was just like, oh no, what are you, what's going on? Did you get hurt or what are you crying about? And he's like, oh, I just came down and I was walking around and I was remembering all the good memories that I have from this place and it just made me really sad that I was going to have to leave it and um, and he's always been the one that's the most uh, sentimental about the place he was the one that wasn't really all for the move to begin with he was like I don't want to move here from here I like it here I want to stay I just got a cool new room and all this stuff and he didn't want to go really 
Um, and uh, he's half half of the reason why we're moving just up the street is because of that. Because he's, you know, I want my friends. They're all here, and I don't want to move away. Um, and so, yeah, we're not moving away. We're just moving to another house down the street. But, uh, but yeah, he got really sentimental about it. When my wife told me that story, it just made me all the worse. And every time I had to go back to the house to get a couple more loads of stuff, it made me want to cry when I was there. And, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's hard to move away from a place that you've been at for so long. It's just, you know, my life has been that place. My family grew from you know, nothing to what it is now in that place, and and it's just, there's a lot of memories that we have there, and it'll be weird, I suppose, to live down the street from it, we'll keep seeing it, and I, I guess at some point, maybe, we'll stop saying, hey, look, there's our old house, uh, when we drive past, uh, maybe we won't at some point stop saying that, I don't know, but, uh, But yeah, it's kind of upsetting too, like just in the time that since we've been gone, we drove past it yesterday on the way to our other house that we went to look at and just see how the progress was coming on and we drove past our old house and like our um, cherry tree has a broken branch on it now. Uh, My wife is sure it's that stinking neighbor kid that always would break our tree branches. Um... And so, you know, you could see it hanging there and the leaves dying on it. And we're just like, ah, broken branch. And like our clematis bush that we have uh, that was climbing up this little kind of lattice thing that stuck on the wall has been pulled off of this lattice thing that stuck on the wall. And it's just laying flat on the ground. And this is really tall, long clematis bush. And, uh, yeah, and I was just on the ground looking really sad. And I don't know if the my wife again <laughs> insists that it's the neighbor kids. She's like, no, I saw that they were picking at it and they were pulling on it. Um, it's also been really, really, really windy the last little while. And so it could easily have been blown off by the wind. Uh, as well as the cherry tree branch could have been broken by the wind. But usually really little branches like that don't break because of the wind because they're so green and they whip around just fine it's the really thick ones that don't move as well that get broken by the wind so more likely that it was that neighbor kid but yeah because our house was bought by just a group of folks that want to rent it you know so far nothing has happened there's nobody living there yet and uh yeah it's just kind of sad to see our house there empty um be nice to see it when somebody moves in and starts taking care of it and hopefully they do take care of it instead of uh just make things worse hopefully it doesn't become like the white trash house on the street and it looks like crap and the lawn is dead and i don't know what else but um yeah (sighs) it's weird it's weird to have moved away from my house It's also really weird to be stuck living in an apartment. We've got this little three-bedroom apartment, and it's so small for us that uh, I swear it's like we're stepping on each other all the time because it's just small. Um, But but there's a pool. The kids love that. We go swimming every friggin' day, walk in the door, and, Hey, Daddy, can we go swimming? I'm just like, ugh. Can I put down my stuff first? Jeez. Um, So anyways, I guess I can talk more about that on another day. I'm almost to work already, so that means that this is a long episode. So I'm going to let it go and uh, just say, Hey everybody, thanks for listening. And uh, unfortunately I haven't done much writing recently haven't done any writing recently because of all the crap that's been going on um but i will get to that soon and start making that a priority as soon as i can uh but thanks for listening i'm big anklevich and i'll see you next time